Welcome to The Mary Mack Show, where we will be talking about your feelings, experiences, and pain following the death of a loved one. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you find yourself in this entire world, I welcome you. How are you doing, my friend, my warrior? I certainly hope you are well. In this week's episode, I'd like to talk to you about our veterans. Veterans are those people who have served in our country's military. They have taken on the responsibility of keeping our people safe. They fight for our freedoms. Many soldiers have given their lives so that we can remain free. In the United States, we celebrate Veterans Day this week to honor those men and women who have served, who fought in wars, some in foreign lands, to keep our nation free but also to keep other countries free during wars such as World War I and II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and most recently in Iraq and Afghanistan. Your country knows how special your veterans are to you. You know individuals in your community who make a difference by joining the military for the sake of your freedom. Each year in the United States on November 11th, we celebrate and thank those who are veterans. Your special day to honor your veterans in your country may be many months away, but I'd like to take this time to acknowledge all the sacrifices and the love and care that they share with the citizens of their countries by giving up so much to protect us and sometimes even protect the citizens of other countries who are having a horrific time protecting themselves. Veterans give up a lot to serve their country. Sometimes they lose their buddies in combat. Sometimes they come home with injuries that might be temporary. Sometimes they come home with permanent injuries, including loss of limbs, permanent paralysis, even brain injuries. They rely on their families to take care of them and see them through these injuries to a more stable point. Their families travel with them to doctor visits and hospitals. They rearrange their family home sometimes at a substantial cost. They grieve for their family and the way it once was, and they grieve for their body and the way it once was. They miss the ability to be free, to travel and partake in many activities with family and friends, such as hiking and sports, fishing, camping, fun times with others that may have to be temporarily placed on hold, maybe permanently now because of injury. There are relationships that are forever changed as their spouse learns how to support the veteran who may now be physically, mentally, and emotionally challenged. 
Relationships with parents can also be different than before they enlisted. The relationships with buddies can also be strained. They may ask themselves, why did I survive and my buddies did not? Maybe a veteran came home unscathed, but their buddies came home with injuries, some that may heal, but others that may not. And I would be remiss if I had not acknowledged the many, many that are all around the world dealing with trauma and post-traumatic stress disorder. For many years after combat, the inability to sleep well, feel calm, feel at peace, may be an elusive thing. Nightmares of what they witnessed, who they needed to kill, to survive and protect their own, reliving all the horrors of seeing their buddies killed or maimed before their eyes. For those of us who are not veterans, but had or have veterans in our family, we can't even imagine the fear of living through such emotional and mental stress and pain for years while on active duty. My uncle was based in the Pacific Islands during World War II, when America was fighting the Japanese at the time. My mother, who was his younger sister, recalls receiving letters that came home with many words, lined out in black, so if the enemy had received that mail, they would not know his whereabouts. And when he came home, he wouldn't talk about his experiences. He was an exceptional man who I loved deeply, but it was clear that he did not want to share that time with anyone in our family. There is no doubt that it takes an extraordinarily exceptional man or woman to do what is necessary in battle to keep our nation free. And when they arrive home, they need our love and support in so many ways. Sometimes our veterans will question themselves as to what more they could have done to help their buddies. They question why they are here and their buddies are not. They have survivor guilt. What if I had done this? What if I had done that? And until the revelation sinks in, that nothing could have been done differently, will they be able to settle this in their soul. They took the best actions they could at the time, and no amount of remorse will change anything. While on active duty for so many years, they didn't have the time to pause and grieve all those deaths of others. So when they finally get to process all that has happened over so long, it hits them, and it hits them hard. They are now confronted with their grief, and sometimes so much, all at once, leads many to the possibility of suicide, either attempted or completed. Here in the United States of America, we are experiencing the suicide deaths of 27 veterans each day. These are horrific numbers. And while I'm not a doctor, I have studied homeopathy for many years. And I believe a homeopathic remedy called Aurum Metallicum, which is actually made from gold, can help when one wants to take their life and I believe it would be an exceptional assistance to veterans worldwide. The majority of the world uses homeopathy to treat patients, and in the United States, we once had homeopathic hospitals which were highly effective. But allopathic or pharmaceuticals have crept into our culture, and while some do help illnesses, most mask the symptoms instead of getting down to the root cause, as homeopathy does. So since Aurum can be highly effective 
I believe it should be considered in every veterans hospital and clinic for the benefit of our veterans in the United States and all around the world. If Orem can help, there is no reason to suffer needlessly. So to my veterans around the world, please look for a classically trained homeopathic doctor who can help you. They would have the initials CCH after their name. When a veteran comes home, they are now trading a machine gun for a laptop or another skill, and I can't even imagine how difficult that would be. It moves veterans from their initial lifestyle to a completely other lifestyle and then back again. And when they come home, they can be completely changed, and that is the struggle, because they will never be the person they were before they went into battle. And how could they be? So families scramble to adjust to a veteran who now comes home and may be completely different than when they were first deployed to faraway places. Learning to reclaim their life with a family they love is not easy. Everyone is expecting them to be exactly the same way they were when they left. But how can they be? They've seen war, death destruction, and injury several times over. They come home a different person. It is up to everyone in the family to adjust to a new veteran and a new life, which can create stress in the family for all members. For parents of a service member who is single, for a spouse if married, for children who are looking for their dad or mom that they always knew, but now they may be different physically, mentally, or perhaps emotionally. They may have missing limbs, may have had a brain injury when an explosive device occurred, maybe even leaving that person permanently paralyzed. Life is different now for many people in the lives of the veteran, and none of it is easy. For older veterans who haven't seen combat in decades, they still remember. One trip to the Vietnam Memorial Wall in Washington, D.C., or to your memorial wall in your community or country, where the monuments stand for all those killed in battle. Your veteran still remembers. So while it happens to be our Veterans Day this week in the United States, on November 11th, whenever your special day may be in your country, we honor your veterans along with you. And to all the men and women around the world, who died for our freedoms, and especially those whom we honor today, who survived those battles, who survived death, destruction, enormous mental, physical, and even emotional pain and stress. We all thank you for what you have done to keep us free. You may not have made your pain known. You may be suffering or have suffered in silence but I want you to know we are grateful. We are thankful for all that you've been through for our benefit. So please do seek help if you are still struggling. Seek and visit a homeopathic doctor if you feel suicidal and believe nothing is working. You are an amazing person. Not many could have gone through what you've been through, and we honor you and are grateful for your service. Please, take good care of yourself. You are the best of the best. I will leave some links in the show notes where you can find help. Please don't be ashamed to use the services of call centers that are anonymous and can help when you need to speak to someone in confidence. And for those who love our veterans, you too 
can gain strength from reaching out to those confidential helplines when you are feeling stressed and need help. May you be richly blessed. So now it's time to get up and dance, dance, dance. Wiggle and move your body even if it is in a sitting position. And I know you still think this is crazy, but please just do it for me anyway, okay? Thank you for listening in today. Remember to write five things in your journal each night that you are grateful for. Please subscribe to my podcast wherever you listen to me and share with those who may benefit from it. And if you would kindly support my podcast, you'll find info on my site, marymac.info, to do just that. And as always, remember to be happy because you deserve to. I'll speak with you again soon.